Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be working on a Game Boy Color project. And so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this old beat up Game Boy Color that I picked up recently from Japan and we're going to be consoleizing it so that we can play it on a modern display using HDMI and using a Super Nintendo controller um, as your button inputs. So I picked this Game Boy Color. I got this recently from an auction in Japan and you know, you can see that it is pretty beat up. So there's been a lot of heat, maybe sunlight, that delaminated and ruined the original screen. And if you take a look in the battery compartment, you can see that this is all rusted out. So, you know, it's kind of beat up. Um, thankfully, it does work as a fully functioning Game Boy Color. And so what we're going to do is just take the motherboard out and using this amazing kit from Gamebox Systems, uh, we'll turn it into a console that we can play on a modern display. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to take the Game Boy Color motherboard and remove it. Um, just so you know, I did test this um, in advance, and even though the battery terminals are toast, the original power port does work, and so I was able to confirm that this is, in fact, a fully functioning Game Boy Color. I wouldn't recommend using one that has, like, extensive battery damage because some of the traces might be cut, and then, you know, you really can't count on it working after you do all the hard work of modifying it. So, anyway... To remove this, you need a tri-wing screwdriver, and there's six screws on the back that you need to remove. And then once that's done, there are three regular Phillips screws that hold this to the front half. There's one here, here, and here. Um, and then once that's done, you just need to take these bales and lift them up, and that allows you to detach the screen from the motherboard. So really simple to disassemble a Game Boy Color. So now that that's all taken care of, um, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the speaker. We don't need it. Um, thankfully, this is a working speaker, so I'm going to save it for uh, future repairs. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to have a look at the battery terminals. You can see now just how rusted this one is. Um, so the way I handle this is we're going to have to remove those terminals. And so I'm going to um, use a pair of pliers to hold this with one hand. And then with the other hand, I'm going to heat up these pads and then twist with the pliers. And that's going to allow it to come out without too much difficulty. So once the solder is melted, I just twist with this hand and that takes it out. You definitely need pliers for this, otherwise you're totally gonna burn yourself, trust me. I know from experience. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so from here, the next step is going to be uh, preparing the motherboard a little bit more by uh, just getting some of these vias exposed. All right, so the next step is we're gonna take this GBC HD flex cable. Um, this is designed by Helder, who does a lot of awesome mods for handheld consoles in general. And uh, it's gonna sit right about here or so. And so <clears throat> what this does is it taps into the, um, the left and right channel audio, the inputs, and I think maybe a few other components. I think maybe this is reset, I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah, it taps into a few points on the uh, Game Boy Color motherboard so that you have access to the button inputs and the sound, etc. So in order for this to work, uh, what we need to do is we need to scrape away some of the solder mask so that these vias um, are accessible so that we can solder them to the flex cable. So the normal way that I do this is I take a scalpel like this and it has a, like a fine point. And what you want to do is just carefully scrape away at the via. You don't want to you know, move your hand. You, you want to be careful with your, how your hand moves. You don't want to accidentally scrape away some of the other neighboring points because then when you add solder, you might actually bridge these things together and create problems for yourself. So scrape away the vias, but again, have careful control with your hand. And if you're too aggressive, of course, you can actually cut the traces. So, you know, bear that in mind too. What you want is to see nice shiny copper, like, like how that via looks. Now I'm going to try adding some solder to it. It may not bond to it. Oh, it does. Okay. So that via is probably in decent shape. Um, if it doesn't bond, then you want to continue to scrape away until you, 
uh, have enough copper exposed. So now I'm going to go ahead and scrape away at these remaining traces. Okay, so the flex cable is installed, but I also wanted to show you guys a way of just proofreading and testing your work to make sure that all of these connections are made and also that there aren't any bridges between the pads. I would argue that these set of vias here, which are for connecting the inputs, those are probably the toughest ones to, um, to make a good connection and easiest to bridge, whereas the other ones are really not that bad at all. So let me just show you what I'm doing here. So I have my multimeter and I have it actually set to continuity mode, which is this little sound icon over here. And so if there's a connection between two points, the meter will beep. So now what I'm going to do is um, if you look at the Game Boy Color motherboard, you'll notice that there are these little pads all around the inputs. So each one of these corresponds to a button. So this could be left, up, right, down, button B, button A, select, and start. So I'm just going to pick, uh, I guess, the B button by just touching this pad here. Now, I know already one of these is B, so if I just touch the flex cable, there we go. So the middle pad here, this is B. I believe this one is start. This one over here should be A. And so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm basically touching the flex cable pads on one end, and then on the other end, I'm touching the test points. And as long as I have a beep, then I know that there's continuity. I can also test between them just to make sure there aren't any bridges. And uh, I went through a quick test of all this stuff, and I can tell that they're not. There's probably ways of also testing the sound as well. But like I said, these pads are really big. It's kind of hard to mess these up. Um, so I think everything is all set. All right, so that's actually, I think, all of the soldering we need to do. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so one thing I realized uh, during my assembly is that I actually should not have soldered this one little pad here to the reset line. So if you guys are following along and you did this, I apologize for that. Just make sure you desolder this. And I actually took a little piece of Kapton tape and stuck it underneath here, and that just prevents these two from ever touching. I also used a piece of double-sided tape uh, to attach the flex cable here, and that just gives it extra strength just to protect this pad right here, because this is your primary voltage coming in. Here's your ground. So those all need to be, you know, well secured on, on, um, on the motherboard. All right, so let's continue with the install. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the process of assembling this thing. And we have three components. We have this little PCB here, which has the Super Nintendo controller port. We've got the main GB HD color PCB. And then we've got this little flex cable here, and this is going from the ribbon uh, for the screen all the way here. So let me show you how to assemble this. So first I'm going to start with the screen. So you're going to place the contacts facing up, just like how the real screen used to be. And just tighten these bales to lock it down, like so. And then <clears throat> we're going to put this in contacts down on the GBHD PCB. Just Slap, you know, rotate this down to lock it into place. Um, <clears throat> this PCB here, this is the Super Nintendo port. So we're going to flip up this one and we're going to place it contacts facing down. So the blue facing towards you. All right, like that. Now this is the, probably the trickiest part. So what I'm gonna do now is flip it up and here the contacts are actually gonna be facing up. So these these uh, you know gold contacts here. So what I'm gonna do is put it like this and then just kinda rotate it. And I know this is probably hard to see and I'm sorry for that. 
but just slide it in like that and hmm. <laughs> not so easy to do on camera let me try this again all right just like this make sure ah okay it wasn't fully opened there we go it needs to be much higher there we go okay so it's just going to get rotated like this slide it into place and then lock it down okay so all of it is now assembled so now let's go ahead and move on to installing it into the shell all right so the first thing we're going to do is take the snes port and the gbhd pcb and we're going to put them in here on the bottom and we have seven of these very small screws that we're going to use to secure them into place All right, so that's all in place, and I just had to make sure that all of these ports are accessible from the side, and they are. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these intermediate size screws, and there's four of them. We're gonna use that to lock this little piece into place. And then we have these two larger black screws. Those are gonna go right over here and here, respectively, and that's gonna lock the Game Boy Color motherboard into place. All right, so there's not much left. The only thing to keep in mind is make sure you flip the switch into the on position because that's how it's going to stay. And if you have a faulty power switch, you actually may want to solder some points together to force it to stay on all the time. I'm not going to do that here because this one's in good shape. But um, the final thing we got to do is we're going to take these two components. You just push this guy into place. And then when you slide this in, you kind of come in from the bottom up to the top. The reason why is because of the power jack and the headphone jack, which are here. So you just kind of come in like this. And you might have to like, there we go, tuck that guy in. And now we're going to take the largest screws in the set, and they're going to go here. And now we're just gonna take the last two screws and place them in here. All right, so that's it, it's all finished. And I really have to say, I love this 3D printed build. It looks nice. The fact that it's semi-transparent means that you can kind of see the guts inside. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead, plug this thing in and see how it works. Okay, so I've got everything assembled, so let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see what it does. All right, there we go. Nice. So, looks like everything's working. I would say maybe the one thing I wish it had that it doesn't is that there isn't a power switch so you've got to have one of those cords with a power switch in line and uh, I mean that's okay I, I wish it had one on the case itself but this is fine um, I can say that the image looks really crisp everything is just you know perfect um, very comparable to the GBA consoleizer which I've shown in a previous video so let's go ahead and open up the on-screen display uh, I'm just testing the inputs too with the Super Nintendo controller that seems to be working. Yep, everything is good. All right, so now let me hold down the start and select button for five seconds, and that's gonna open up the OSD. Okay, so from here, we can change the resolution to either 720p or 480p. I believe both of these are integer scales, which means that you don't have any 
Um, any ghosting or any kind of issues with, or shimmer rather, sorry, that's what I meant to say, any kind of shimmering when you're moving in the horizontal or vertical direction. Um, you can change the scaling to stretch or to the TV mode, although I think the proportional scaling is probably how I would always leave it. Um, you can mess around with overscan like this, so you can see the whole image versus it being clipped a little bit. Um, there's also scan lines, which I'm never really a fan of, but some people absolutely love. Um, and then you can also remap the controllers, change the border color, and I believe you can soft power it by hitting the A button right here. So, yeah, I mean, this looks outstanding, and it's a really nice way to enjoy original Game Boy games or Game Boy Color games. Um, it also even has the IR functionality available for the few games that use it as well. So I think it's an awesome kit. I, um, I actually built this for the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo, and it's part of our Ring of History exhibition where we have consoles from the very dawn of video games to the present day. And uh, hopefully you guys will be able to stop by. It's um, in Garden City, New York, and it's August 12th to the 14th, I believe. So definitely come over and check it out. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.